before anyone else pops in. Jumps in. <laughs> it's flowing. Uh, th this, this is amazing. This is amazing moment. This is just awesome. Um, okay. Good morning, <laughs> good afternoon, and good evening, kingdom family from around the world. Welcome to Atmosphere 12.2, where things are possible to all and to them that believes. We are, we stay together, we grow together, and we change the, change world, the world together. together. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Amen. That change the world together is going is coming to play tonight because that is what governance is all about. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jenny. And um, thank you, Ruben. You are indeed back, I can see. And uh, it's it is awesome. Well, you know how when you start doing things and you begin to get uh Never say in the middle of a project or you are thinking about something and all of a sudden you start to get information in that regard that you never planned for. I think that happened to me this week. We are in line with uh, what we are looking at, um, this uh, kingdom governance. I mean, I listened to... Please, God, Teresa, leave me alone. Yeah, it's Somebody been calling me to too. call me while I'm in the middle of a meeting. When you, you know, you're, you're, you are doing something and you start. Dad, put your phone on. on Papa, put, put your phone. Let me go out. I, I just sent her a message that can you call me sometime? And this is using Telegram to call me. You put your laptop on sleep. Eh? Put your put laptop on what? Sleep on do not disturb or sleep. Sorry, Jenna, go. <laughs> you and yeah, Apple. Sorry. Too, I forgot. Sienna, do not disturb. Uh, Jen, where is it? Uh, drag top right down from the battery. Yes. Down, then it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. Don't disturb me, okay? <laughs> no, wrong one. Okay, so <laughs> I'm still on track. So I, I got this message that uh, the title is Undressing a Well-Dressed Lie. Have you had anything like that? Okay. I have never before, for the first time during the week. Undressing a Well-Dressed Lie. The, the, the caption actually got me. I thought, yeah, this is fine. And I listened to, and uh, the speaker started by telling a story, which is really nice. And uh, it's a kind of allegory, allegory story. Talked about once upon a time, there was a race, a, a competition of swimming between lies and truth. Truth and lie, we are going to have a competition in swimming. Now, the, the, the challenge was who will be first to get to the other side of the, of the, of the, to the other end, you know, to the end of, of whatever the length of the, of the swimming. So now truth, get ready and lie on the other side, get ready. And when the, on your mask, get ready, you know, get set and go. Truth dive in, you know, into the water. And truth was going right inside and lies on the top, look around and grab all the clothes that truth left on the side. The lies put on all the clothes and he start running on the edge. He never went into the water and keep on running and running quicker to get to the end of the of the swimming 
And then um, people standing and watching, and they saw lies dressed in truth. And everybody is saying, this looks like truth. You know, they were pointing to lie running and saying, this looks like truth. And while truth was keep swimming, and when you get to the end of the swimming, he get up and he came out only to find that all his clothes had been taken and run, you know, the lies was wearing the clothes. And here the truth starts chasing uh, the lies and people looking at it and say, here is the naked truth, you know. Um, <laughs> I don't know whether you got it, but you better do. So, and they say, this is real. This is the naked truth, you know. So sometimes I'm sure you've had that terms of naked truth, you know. And if you really want to speak it and they say, oh, this is the naked truth. So I look at that from what we shared last Sunday. There was a lot of undressing the well-dressed lie that we have. You know, religion has equipped us for, for a long time. And uh, that is one thing that happened to me this uh, this week. And another thing I'm gonna talk in line, you have no idea what tonight meant for Jane. And I'm gonna, uh, Jane, don't drop off. You're gonna be here throughout today. today. Um, has she dropped off? Good. So Jane, I don't see you, but you are there. She is the next, um, but that will come as this set uh, 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 I'm sharing. Can you see? Yes. Beautiful. So this is a uh, uh, part two of uh, principle of engagement, or, and and which is governance, governance, governance. Part two of what we started last week. Um, again, Ruben, as usual, you will see why I say you, you took my note in the spirit. Um, so here we are. Last week, we look at the uh, eight things that was not part of our assignment. I just want to recap on that because it is very, very important. Number one is that God did not give, you know, part of our assignment is not to go to, number one is, our assignment is not to go to heaven. I know this is, we are the, you know, undressing a well-dressed, you know, a well-dressed lie comes in. Because for some reason, religion has made all of us to be, you know, we're going to heaven. When I get to heaven, I know whom I will see. There's so much song written about going to heaven. But is that real? Well, this is the naked truth. God did not assign us to go to heaven. Interestingly, we know we, that where we come from. We come from there to start with. We, we originate before the foundation of the world with him. So the assignment is not to, for us to go there. I know at the end of the session, we, we shared a lot in that regard. So number two, we are not assigned to prepare people either, you know, to go to heaven either. That's not our calling. But what has the church done for as long as we can remember? We're preparing people to go to heaven. Is that truth? Again, that is, a uh, well-dressed lie, and here is naked truth, you know, chasing and exposing this well, undressing a well-dressed lie for many, many years. So we're not preparing people to go to heaven. This is the best every church is doing. Every pastor is called to prepare people, to equip people, you know, to, to, to prepare people to go to heaven. That is a misplaced assignment, okay? Another one is God has not assigned us to establish religion. I am sure that by now, if you've been around us, we will know that religion never originates from him. And that's not what we are called to do. Our propagation is not religion. Our propagation is the kingdom of God. 
Okay, number four, to promote a religion or a denomination is not our assignment. This is not what we are called to do. Okay? Um, we are not assigned to separate or isolate ourselves from the world. What has religion? Be not equally yoked with unbelievers. You know, there's so much that has um, uh, isolated people who should have been you know, the agent and the true representative of the presence of God here on earth. Okay, number five and six says, we are not assigned to attack or condemn the world either. That's not our mission. And we know that there are churches that are best in that. Okay, seven, we are not assigned to compete with the world. And of course, finally, we are not assigned to avoid the world. So these are things we cover in detail. If you missed it, please uh, look at and revisit the teaching of last week because there are a lot of clarification that are made. So this is it, uh, what we looked at last week. And uh, after that, and uh, they say here that having examined what we are not assigned to do, it is time to look for look more specifically at the assignments our king has given to us. So here is what we supposed to be doing. This is it. And here we go. Please be ready. Okay, number one. What is it? God assigned us to reintroduce the kingdom to the world. That is what he assigned us to do. He assigned us to reintroduce the world, you know, the, the kingdom to the world. Okay. So Jesus set the stage for us. He did. Okay. He laid the groundwork when he first appeared in his public ministry, proclaiming a simple, straightforward message. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Repent, turn around, change your mind. Have a new perspective. Turn around. We've come to know that the word repent has nothing to do with sin. It's just say, change your mind. Turn around, change direction. See, look at something new. The kingdom of heaven has arrived. Okay, so he called followers to himself and established his church. I said last week, the church, his ecclesia, simply means they called out once to continue the work he began, to preach the same message and to carry out the same assignment. That's why... The church, the church was never meant to be a religion or a religious organization. The church was to be, I'd say that you've heard me say that what university is to the world, that is what the church should be for the kingdom of God. The church is not the kingdom. The church is the administrative arm of the kingdom. It's the training place, equipping place. As an ecclesia, this is where we represent the king and carry out the mandate that has been laid upon us. Okay, so that is why he told his disciples, he says, I tell you the truth, okay? And anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will, even, he will do even greater things than this because I am going to the Father. This word has been a very, something that we've, we've uh, loved so much. People all over the world are searching for the kingdom, even though they don't know, they don't know it. They are. The missing link the missing piece worldwide, it doesn't matter whether it's in Europe, whether it's in America or Asia or Africa, 
everyone is searching and what they are looking for. Unfortunately, they are searching for it through religion, but you cannot find the kingdom in religion. Religion is what people will be occupied with until they come to discover the kingdom of God, which is the, our testimony, which is my testimony, which is the testimony of every one of us who have come to know who they are, who have come to discover our identity and who we are and where we are from, as our declaration always says. Okay, so we who are of the kingdom, we bear the responsibility of helping others to find it. That is the good thing about it. As we have found the joy, as we have come to know who we are and who the king is and who, you know, our inheritance, are, it becomes our task to help others. It becomes our responsibility to help others find the same thing, okay? Our assignment is linked with the timing of Christ's return and the end of the age. Because Matthew 24, 14 put it really clear. Something has to happen and that is the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. The gospel of the king. If you are looking at the sign of the end time, this is it. The gospel of the kingdom. It is not the war in the Middle East. It is not the war in Russia. It is not the Gog and the uh, Magog. And, you know, it is not the, uh, what is the other one? Battle of Armageddon. That's not what is going to determine the end time. Look at it. What is going to say the stage for the king is when the, the gospel of the kingdom saturates every part of the globe. You think it's an impossible task? Well, not when heaven says it. Not when heaven says it. Okay, so this is what's going to mark the end time. And we know. Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah chapter 2 that at the last days, the mountain of the Lord is going to rise over and above every other mountain. And all nations shall run to it. So the gospel of the kingdom is going to be the deciding factor and the true measure of the end time. We're going to saturate the world. Okay. So number two, God designed us to repossess the earth with the kingdom. That is his intent. And that's what we are designed for. That is what we've been assigned. We are looking at our assignments here. Okay? So, Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it belongs to the king. That's his. So when you are looking, who are, what are you seeing? Who do you think owns the world? Religion, we say, oh, the evil one. The devil is in charge. Mm -hmm. Well, he may be an imposter. Yes, he is. He is a pretender. Yes, he is. But who owns the earth is the Lord's. And when you know that, and then we know where to look at and what, you know, what to expect. The next scripture is Psalm 115. But the highest heaven belongs to the Lord. I think, Margaret, this is what you were asking last week at the end in about the different levels of, okay. Now, Psalm is saying the highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to man. Well, he has given us. So why do we think we want to run away? and run to where? How can we escape? Okay? You know, each time someone leaves their place of habitat and run away somewhere else, they become refugees. Okay? Australia wants to bring over a thousand, you know, from, uh, from Gaza. They're going to re relocate. 
something is pushing them out from their original habitat. Okay? A lot of people who want to escape earth and go to heaven, what is chasing you? Because you don't know who you are and what you have. So, the earth, we are here for it. Okay? Now, these verses are still true because God never changes, okay? And his gifts and calling are irrevocable, Romans eleven twenty nine. So he is faithful. His word is yea and amen. It hasn't changed. So there's no time God has changed his mind and now say, okay, uh, you know what? I'm gonna uh, get you out of this place. So don't be in a haste. Thank you, Margaret. I'll be calling Margaret a lot today because she, she's caught the revelation. You know, um, you cannot mention how old you are with absolute confidence. You can, you know that there is more to you, our life than what, you know, we've come to uh, come in terms with in the past. Okay, next. For... Thousands of years, the earth effectively has been under the rule as well as swear of Satan, the pretender. We know that. We know it. We are aware of that. You see, our awareness changes. It's like when Jesus knew what he was coming for when he arrived. But he also knew exactly what he came to do. He knew. And he began without allowing what was around him to overwhelm him. This is where we need a change of perspectives. And the moment we've got this, we are ready for action. Okay? Christ's death and resurrection broke Satan's power and put him on notice of eviction. I don't know how many demons you have casted out since you become a believer. They obey us. Say you shall cast out demons. I don't know how many. I, I I don't keep count of you know the enemy being completely evicted him and pushing him out where he has been residing illegally for a long time. And for truth, we dispossess him and we completely take over and restore back into order lives that has been devastated by him. Okay. Jesus restored the kingdom of heaven on earth to its rightful human overlords. We are. He did it. And then he restored it back to us. He didn't take it to heaven. He said, the works I do, you will do. He didn't take what he did back to heaven. I don't know where and how the concept you know, this was a mask for me on that, on, on, on undressing a well-dressed lie. I tell you that message, uh, that's for another day. I can't, I can, there's no way I can do justice by saying anything on that part tonight. I leave that for next time, whenever. Okay, so now, like the ancient Israelite after they crossed the river Jordan to take possession of the land of Canaan, as God had promised. It is time for us as kingdom citizens to fully repossess the territory that is rightfully ours. We do this not by separating, you know, separating ourselves. We it, we don't do it by separation. We do it through infiltration. Infiltration. These are things we want to cover tonight. All right. Three. God assigned us to engage the world system. That's number three. Okay. Engagement means involvement. Sometimes battles are often called engagement. You hear the military saying, we are engaging the enemy. We, you know, the only way to engage the world is by means of involvement. And this is awesome, okay? To engage 
Something means to meet it head on, to confront it and challenge it without backing down and without surrender. That is what it says. Now, popular society and culture will never be changed by those who refuse to engage them. Now, this is where kingdom is real, engaging the system. That is what we are called to do. Two weeks ago, I'm sure my Jenny is here. Two weeks ago, and she will she wouldn't mind I'm talking about her because she's already all over the world. Jane did something in New Zealand. Jane spoke to me a few months back that she has real interest into bodybuilding, which might result that she will be going for a competition on bodybuilding. Um, Pastor Rubika, you are spot on. She had these hats that she put this on and she put that off. She put this on and she put that off. And every word that come tonight, Ruben, everyone that spoke, Jerry. Now, I, I'm the one that I, I see potentials. And when I see something, I say, go for it. When she shared about this, I said, my dear, you, the, the, the world is your playground for the kingdom of God. Whatever that, any door he opens, walk through it. She started training for this uh, bodybuilding competition in New Zealand. And two weeks ago, two weeks, she went for the first time in her life to compete on this board. Now, you will hear bodybuilding and you say, what? But here we are talking about engaging the system. Here we are talking about the way to take back is not by running away, it's not by avoiding. Remember, Jane went for this bodybuilding. It was televised live through their YouTube channel. And uh, I was watching my girl from the comfort of my seat here. I could not contain my excitement. And I was typing in there, you know, that's my girl, you know. And uh, when she went to work the next day, her colleagues were saying, did your dad, was that your daddy that was saying this? People around the world who were watching even see when I was cheering my daughter up. But the amazing thing, Jane won first position for her categories. She won another category. She won another gold. She won two golds. She won one silver and she won another bronze. Four medals. Go, Jano! Four medals on that day. Now, this, if that is not done, tell me what it is. Okay. One of the thing that has made us here in Project 61 and Atmosphere 12 so important is that we lead from the front. Most of what we share, we actually demonstrate. When we are talking about governance and taking over, this is our assignment. This is it. Okay. Now, it has been said that all that is necessary for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. Evil has held swear in the world for far too long. Okay? So people need to know that life has meaning and purpose. They need to know that there is an alternative to the seemingly unending circle of hatred, violence, cruelty, poverty, and misery. They need to be given reason for hope. And this we can do if we are running away. If we are not engaging, if we are not 
And the only reason why we run away is because we do not know who we are, not knowing our identity. For over a year plus, we hammer on identity because that is what prepare us for our ability to govern. If we are gonna step into our governing calling and assignments, we cannot do it until we know who we are. That's what Jesus did. He knew who he was and he knew where he came from and he knew who have sent him. Okay, so our assignment is to infect the popular culture with the values and morals as well as standards of the kingdom of God. One way to do this is by working diligently for the passage of laws that uphold standards for the election of public officials. Who will do the same? Well, I've been working on the constitution of the United Republic of Biafra with other people. More on that to come. The reason is simple. Whoever controls the law controls the culture. We cannot back out. We cannot stop. We cannot think that all our calling is come and pray, 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 pray. You know, that's what Nigeria Christians have been doing and the enemy has taken everything from under their nose because they fast and pray for everything. Okay, so that is why the first thing God did after delivering the children of Israel from Egypt, you know, Egyptian slavery was he gave them a code of law. Now, this is interesting because he needed to reshape their slave culture and mindset into the culture and mindset of God's people. The Ten Commandments has two parts. First part is love God. Second part is love people. Love your neighbor. It revolves on dignity and I, you know, I, identity, knowing him, relating with him, but also relating with our own human beings. But of course, religion has, has bastardized the law with every other thing that comes and make it. The law is a revelation of love. I call it a love letter. It is our father revealing, telling us who he is. I am. I am. Okay? So our purpose in engaging the world system is the same. Because all of a sudden, through the kingdom, we have come to know who he is, but also we have come to know our fellow human beings and brothers and sisters. Okay, number four. God designed us to influence the world, not to keep up with it. We are not, the, the, we said he didn't call us to avoid the world, but more so, we are not just to keep up with the world. No, no, we are to influence the world. It is impossible to change a culture by accommodating it. No. Okay? Because that is what the church has done many, many years. Believers have tried to do. And uh, it has not led us to anywhere when we try to accommodate, you know, just if you can be them, join them. Accommodating is something that has destroyed something, unfortunately, religion sold to the church. We are unique in every sense. So the only thing we accomplish by accommodating culture is to become like and, you know, the very thing we are trying to change. That is what happened by accommodating. But we know how unique we are. We are not afraid of, you see, if you don't know who you are, you will settle on anything. <laughs> Ruben again. He talks about the, you know, the preference, preference and uh, What's the other one? Preference and... Uh, conviction. Conviction, thank you, see? <laughs> you know, we just uh, negotiated uh, um, our friend, uh, our boy, High Saint. He wanted to go, but that was based on preference 
And when we say, oh, you stay, we negotiated him out of his uh, preference and he's sitting down there. But you know, with conviction, it is a non-negotiable. When we are captured, when we are wrapped with this kingdom, it's non-negotiable. We don't run from the enemy, the enemy run from us. Amen. So rather than transforming culture, when we accommodate, we allow the popular culture to transform us into its, into its own image. Uh, uh, Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform, but be transformed. We are. We trans not only we are transformed, but we transform those culture. We are not conforming to it. There are a lot that is not godly. There are a lot that is not said by our father. And we, we, we know them. And we don't mess, we don't pity them. We bring light in a place of darkness. Okay. The secret to effective influence is to remain distinct. The standard as well as principle of the kingdom of heaven are diametrically opposed to those of the world. We know the difference. But before religion, through church, people are driven with fear. You know, you don't know the difference. That's why you cannot make up your mind. You can't take a stand. But with kingdom, we know the truth. We are not moved. We can go anywhere. Okay? So, when people in that system see kingdom communities, where kingdom citizens are living according to kingdom principles, the difference will be so stark as to be unmistakable. That's what happened in, the, in, in, in Acts chapter four. So when they see that kingdom community actually work and bring about an environment and lifestyle of peace, joy, contentment, prosperity, unlike anything found in the world. You know what? That becomes irresistible. They will come to us, okay? This is Acts chapter 5, from verse 12 to 14. The apostles performed many signs, wonders, and miracles among the people. And the believers were wonderfully united as they met regularly in the temple court, in the area known as Solomon's porch. No one there harmed them. For everyone held them in high regard. Look at verse 14. Continually, more and more people believe in the Lord, and we are added to their number. Great crowd of both men and women. It is religion that looks for membership. Kingdom doesn't, because people will see the authenticity, the reality, the power and presence in this house as we sang tonight, as that song projected. This house is not just that building out there. When they will see this and they will be attracted. We are not looking for, people will look for what we carry. People will see us and they will identify with us. Amen. Change. Changing the world is our goal. Hallelujah. People that stay together, grow together, change the world together. So changing the world is our goal. Our assignment is nothing less than to change the world. So it is more than a slogan for us. It is more than a slogan. It is a reality. It is an assignment heaven has given to us. Change the world and not, and to do that, we have to become involved with the world. That is what my baby stepped out. I wonder whether she, she knew because she, she had peace. That is an area, you know, many of us will say, oh, oh is that not worldly? What, what am I gonna say? What will other people say? But she broke 
that barrier and say, here I am, a princess. Here I am. And of course, the world, amazingly. Interestingly, something happened. One of the judges on that, uh, on that day, one of the judges in New Zealand that we are judging that competition was my youth leader while I was pastoring in a place called Tokoroa. When he saw her name, when he saw her name, he quickly messaged uh, my son, Luke Jr. Say, do you, you know, is, 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 is this name from your family? And Luke said, yes, he is. He was dumbfounded. And he quickly went to her at the end. He said, do you remember me? And the joy. And it, it, it was amazing. It was amazing. So that is what it means. Number five, assign, God assigned us to infect the world, not reject the world. When mankind choose to disobey God and reject his rule, you know, God would have been perfectly within his right as our creator, he would have rejected us or destroyed us. Possibly start all over. Is that too hard for him? No, but he did not choose to do that. He chose to pursue us in spite of our sin and he woo and win us back to him. And he did this by direct involvement. Through his son, Jesus Christ, the king, he injected himself directly into the world system to change it, not by war or conquest, but by influence, by the gradual infiltration and manifestation of his power and presence in the lives of individuals. This is us. This is us. Okay, Jesus went directly and deliberately to the castors of society, the people whom even the religious leaders, especially the religious leaders, want, you know, wanted nothing to do with. These are the ones he went to because every, every life, every human being is precious because we all carry the DNA of our dad. That is what it is. Okay. He related to each one on a personal level. In the same way, we are to spread the kingdom influence throughout the world like an infection, one person at a time. Thank you, Ruben. In Dallas, we are sending out messages. The thing is, anywhere we, any, whenever heaven opens door, we walk through it. And that is happening a lot with us lately and recently. There are a lot happening for us. Number six, God designed us to revolutionize the world. Okay, revolution. Huh? Is that? Yeah. As kingdom citizens, we are revolutionaries because our Lord was a revolutionary. That's what he was. Okay. Christ never led an army, sorry, an armed revolt against the Romans. He never. But his life and teachings were revolutionary in their effect. Okay? Unlike other revolutionaries who always seek to establish new ideas, Jesus' goal was to re-establish an old idea, God's original big idea of kingdom of, sorry, of heaven on earth. That is it. It wasn't, it wasn't something new. He re-established something. Okay. His strategy was to employ words rather than, uh, Ruben said it again here today, say we use words rather than warfare influence instead of invention. We use words. You're saying we don't hide anymore. 
we use words. In our places, wherever we are located, words. Words. Okay? This is why, you know, he commonly made statements like, he would say, you have heard that it was said. And then he said, but I tell you. He just said, you have heard it was said, but I tell you. Okay? He was applying a corrective. He was replacing bad ideas with good ideas and wrong thinking with right thinking. This is kingdom. Because wherever we are, we don't just succumb, we don't run. We listen. It's interesting again. I said, went to that place. He said, I want to listen first. I want to hear. And then when you begin to speak, you are speaking correctively. Okay, we, we now begin to speak. We, we, we begin to engage wrong thinking with truth thinking, right thinking. We begin to engage by our lifestyle, things that we have come to know ourselves. We've grown in ourselves. Interestingly, we hear a lot of, we saw through the Olympic, a lot of, you know, ambassadors there who did not hide who they are. They were shining and they were able to say who they are. They didn't miss what. They didn't miss what. But can you imagine when we, you know, when I say 80% uh, uh, of all the athletics people who we are there are all kingdom ambassadors. Can you imagine the atmosphere, what is going to be? And you think it's not going to be? It will. If it doesn't, it's because people who know what to do are not doing anything. But when we understand our callings, our assignments as governance, things begin to change. So true revolution begins by changing people's thinking. Only then do they translate into actions. Okay? That is it. Engaging people's thinking. That is it. We will change the world the same way. By words, by example, and by influence. That's how. Not by avoiding. Okay, number seven. God assigned us to occupy the earth, not to abandon it. So the idea we're going to be here 500 years should not, don't see it as a, oh, Ruben's, uh, you know, Ruben's saying, we got a mission. We got an assignment. We will not abandon the earth. I originate from heaven. So I'm not in a haste to go back there. That will be my destination because when I'm not here, I am with my dad. But uh, there is nothing to make me to abandon what I'm called to do, to begin to look forward to just escape for escaping sake. The world is too bad, therefore let us escape. You have no idea how many people who have filled their basement with water and food because Amagedom is about to. You know, the war drum is beating. I'm not moved by one inch. If anything, I'm seeing opportunity to take the message of the kingdom to the world. Amen. God created the earth to be inhabited. And he created us in his own image to be its inhabitants. We are. We are, okay? And his original mandate to us, which has never changed, was that we be fruitful and multiply, and that we fill the earth and subdue it. In short, that we exercise dominion over the earth. That's, that's mandate for us, okay? The purpose of kingdom communities God's garden on earth is to correct and reverse that history. Yes. Amen. So our assignment is to occupy the earth and fill it 
anew with the vibrant culture of heaven that gives life and purpose and value to everything it touches. Wherever we go, we are spreading life. Number eight, God's assignment is to promote the government of heaven on earth. Okay? We are not here to promote either a religion or ourselves anymore than Jesus did. Okay? Our assignment is to promote the government of heaven on earth. This means that we need to keep on proclaiming, declaring, and leaving it wherever we go. So that's us. Very practical. Down to it. Very, very practical. With rest. Tonight, how much we talk about doing things in rest. From who we are. That's what's happening. You know, my sleeping pattern have changed in recent time a lot. Because most of meetings we are doing in regard to Biafra is from 2 a.m. You know, each time I go to bed, when it is 2 a.m. with no alarm, I wake up. My body. My body wake up. And does that make me tired during the day? No. No. Every now and then I catch up a bit more sleep. Yeah. But is it, am I drained? Do I lose focus? No. Some of our folks would say, no, look, uh, we are really, I'd say, listen, I am delighted. And I'll be the one that set up the link. I set up the Zoom and send out the Zoom. I'm the one that will remind them, you know, I'm the one that say five minutes, you know, one hour starting, 10 minutes starting. I'm the one. And these are all, you know, I'm doing it with joy. There is no stress whatsoever. Okay. We need to promote the kingdom in our jobs. Ruben, you latched on that. You took my note. Thank you. In our businesses, in our families, through our investments, and in our relationships, in our marriages, and through our parenting. This is everything. This is it. This governance affect everything. Sometimes, you know, we, people, it's like someone who wants to go ministry. A lot of people think in religion and church setting that ministry is only what happens when you go to Bible college or, you know, when you mount the pulpit, that is when ministry. No, no. With kingdom, it is every area of our lives. It's, we demonstrate. So we must bring the kingdom into everything every arena and every facet of life. That is our assignment, okay? Mingling with the wheat. This is really interesting because in Matthew, Jesus uh, spoke, Matthew chapter 13. He told them another parable, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servant came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? He answered and said, An enemy did this. The servant asked him, do you want us to go and pull them out? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Tell me about that. <laughs> when I went to New Zealand in 1991, um, this amazing uh, uh, mansion where I was staying, Every Friday we do uh, what we call a cleaning. And uh, I will go to this uh, uh, section at the back and I'll be weeding. I thought I was weeding the, 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 the weeds. 
I didn't know that I was actually pulling all the real flowers in the basin. And one day somebody came and he shouted and went and called uh, Dr. Tony. Everybody ran down there because half of the flowers have uprooted because I didn't know which is which. So when the owner said, no, 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 leave them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burnt. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. That's Matthew chapter. Now, as Jesus explained to his disciples later, the man who sowed the good seeds represent the son of man, Jesus himself. The enemy who sowed the weeds is the devil. Now, the good seed represents children of the kingdom, and the weeds, children of the devil. Well, children who allow the devil to mess, you know, mess their mind, stole their identity because the devil never born any child. He never born any child. Okay, so the point I want to, us to understand here is that the weed and the, the wheat and the weeds, the children of the kingdom and the children of the devil are allowed to grow together until harvest. Okay? So you never want to isolate yourself. You never. I mean, the glory that Jane took into that, that uh, competition two weeks ago, can you imagine? That glory reflect on everyone, everyone who was there to see that she is exceptionally merit all her winnings. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so we don't do by isolating. Okay, in other words, kingdom citizens mingle with citizens of the world throughout history, and this is by the king's design. If heaven make it that way, why should we say otherwise? He has chosen deliberately to leave his children in the world, that is you and I, in the midst of the weeds so that we can make a difference in the lives of those weeds. Okay. Our calling is not to hide from the world, but to engage it for kingdom of heaven. Jesus put it this way. Look at it. He says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything. I want you to put in our chat box, say, I am good for something. Make that declaration. It's a declaration we're going to make at the end. But write it down there, say, I am good for something. I am good for something. It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. Ruben, see it again. See the power. Eh? You, we've been talking about this, and here is the king. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bow. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. So in the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your father in heaven. Hallelujah. Call to governance. Okay, now, P61 is intentionally moving into governance in these areas, wealth creation. Because as we have seen the assignment from that, everything we are doing, you know, some of us understand, some don't understand. Some of us have no idea why wealth creation is a big, it's right on the top of agenda. And I want to thank you, Ruben, for your understanding because it takes an understanding for this to happen you know wealth creation is an area that we are intentionally moving into because 
the wealth of this world is still in the hand of the you know the, the, those who don't understand or know kingdom and that's why sometimes things go awkwardly and uh, it does not we will not be discouraged by whether things are going up or whether things are going down but we are taking governance in this area within our sphere something is happening but not only that in sports and arts when when you understand this you begin to appreciate what is happening in kenya you begin to appreciate and understand the change that sons of god are doing and bringing into a whole new area that nobody and if we are the first to do that it's going to be multiplied around the world yes it it comes with challenges but we are in the right direction we are in the will of our father because we are intentionally moving into governance in this area. We are taking ownership. How about social services? I'm, this is the one, in the next five, 10 years, you will see social services taking in because we are getting involved. We are taking ownership in this area because we understand who else will you will serve humanity. Jesus said, I come to serve. He demonstrated the heart of the Father. He restored dignity in every human being. When kingdom lead in social services, can you imagine the least of the least will be, a, will be sitting with kings? And that's how heaven designs it. In the area of government and politics, as I'm talking to you, not just my involvement right with us here in this meeting is someone who is the justice minister in a nation, a new nation that is about to. Now, this is within the context of who we are. We are not just talking, but we are being repositioned. And uh, this is our dream. This is our, our goal to see, even in this Australia, some of us who think we, we, we can't amount to anything. That is why you, I want you to write down that I am good for something because by the time we get to there, you will no more see yourself as a bench warmer or someone who just sit or make up the number because each and every one of us have something to do and to present in our area that heaven has positioned us. How about music and entertainment? We are intentionally moving into governance in this area. This is where Ross, it's Jerry, with what you have, I mean, that has already become a limelight in the nation of Sri Lanka, music and entertainment. What would have just been an ordinary thing? Some musicians, who sing and their records are everywhere, but they still feel empty and they will go and commit suicide. But that's not with kingdom because we know that we are living impact in people's lives through music and entertainment. How about the area of education? Now, these are things that we are intentionally moving into. And if you are with us up till now, Blessed are you, because you are part of what that is doing. And this is who we are. Okay. So in summary, eight things God assigned us to, to reintroduce the kingdom of, you know, to the world, to repossess the earth with the kingdom, to engage the world system. We don't run away from it. To influence the world not to keep up with it, to infect the world, not reject the world. We are here to infect it, okay? Revolutionize the world, to occupy the earth, not abandon it, okay? 
to promote the government of heaven here on earth. Amen. Now, this is our point of discussion tonight. First and foremost, we are making a declaration, and our declaration tonight, and we will say together is, I am good for something. And if that is your declaration, number two, say, what are you good for? It's one thing to say, but you got to say it. As I'm talking, the Holy Spirit will be showing you what you're good for. Write down three things that you are good at and tell us. What is stopping you from doing something for the kingdom? Doing something doesn't have to be, you know, calling fire down from heaven as ordinary as because this area of governance is something we are not playing with. I am glad.